Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV with a little different video for you today. We're going to talk about toy haulers and all the different varied uses and purposes they can have beyond just being a toy hauler. It's actually a name I really, really dislike. Um, it, it, it made sense when toy haulers, they, they originated as really just a garage that you could sleep in. And they have evolved into just this entire subgenre of the RV industry that is, I don't really consider it even a niche market because of all the different things that you can do with these. And there's so many times, I what inspired this video is I talked to some people this morning who are basically looking for a unicorn. They're looking for a travel trailer that could sleep a bunch of kids but could do all these other different things that a travel trailer couldn't do. And all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, a toy hauler can get that done. So. That's what I want to focus on today. It's it, not just specifically that trailer or that trailer, but just rethinking toy haulers in general and almost redefining them as a crossover, uh, like, you know, camping utility trailer, a CUT, a cut, <laughs> the cutting edge, if you will. But step one with all this is the fact that, <laughs> actually circling back to the fact that, yes, it is a toy hauler. And I want to begin with the idea of know your load before you hit the road. So what does that mean? Well, to me, it means have an idea what you're going to put inside this thing before you go looking for a toy hauler. It's kind of uh, another example of the put the cart before the horse conversation where I really recommend, I'm not saying buy, but pick your RV before you get a vehicle if you can so that you know what vehicle to get for it. Make sure you know what you're going to put in your toy hauler before you go getting a toy hauler. And what I mean by that is uh, when it comes to things like golf carts or especially big like side-by-side -side ATVs or something special like a really long like double person kayak because toy haulers are good for more than just like motorized toys. Get the dimensions of that thing. So often guys, we will have people call or email us and go, um, can a side-by-side -side fit in that? I don't know what side by side. There's a million different things out there. So have the dimensions of the thing that you want to load in this on hand and then give us a call and we can help make sure it works. We can get all the measurements on the RV that we have on hand that way and make sure they line up because once you sign the dotted line, uh, it becomes a lot harder to unwind at that point. And just to kind of reinforce that, here's sort of what I'm talking about. Like we are in a Gray Wolf travel trailer toy haul right now. This is a 27RR, which is a rare find, a travel trailer with a private garage. But, you know, you've got the benches, they can fold up and down. You got all these cushions, you got a table. Sometimes you're just not sure how much space you're going to have in here. So knowing what you have is a really critical deal. You know, you can give us a call and say, hey, I got a side-by-side -side that's uh, 66 inches tall. Well, we might measure this out, find out maybe the door jam's not tall enough. And that right there is a major delimiting factor. Because a lot of times people, especially in travel trailers, they say, what's the height inside that? Well, that's six and a half foot tall, but the door is your lowest common denominator. That's only six foot tall. And the last thing I want is for somebody to, you know, rip the canopy off their golf cart or something like that, trying to load it in here. And that's kind of the tricky thing. Like that little guy that we were just in over there. Toy haulers are not a one size fits all kind of thing. Rather, it's a what size fits you. Some are standard body, eight foot wide, maybe six and a half foot tall like we just came from. Some like this are wide body, extra tall, and can load those bigger things. Some have bigger garages, some have smaller, you get the idea. It really, you just, like I said, you gotta know your load before you hit the road. And really, I recommend have it figured out what you're going to be putting in this thing, uh, you know, before you start the shopping process, and it's going to make it a lot easier. But a garage uh, function and loading something into it, I think is a more obvious thing. That was more just kind of a generalized tip. This video, again, I want to really focus on the alternative concepts of a toy hauler. And I think one of the most obvious is using it as like your own personal patio. You're elevated, you're up off the ground where it's not wet and dirty, or... Uh, as is the case today, freezing and snowy. And no, I don't recommend loading a uh, snowmobile in one of these. They're not really made for having that level of uh, water content introduced into them. But, uh, you know, being able to like step outside and enjoy the, uh, the open air like that is very cool. But you don't necessarily have to let the bugs into the rig. Because a lot of toy haulers, not all of them, a lot of toy haulers have some kind of 
I'm going to call it variation of a three seasons wall, whether it's just a roll down tent screen variety like we have behind us. There's some uh, magnetic kind of almost snap on clip on kind of jobs. I actually really kind of like because I think they're a lot easier to use than these things right here. Um, there's also the really nice like glass three season doors. What's cool about that is depending on the style or layout of your toy hauler, you're not just letting like say all of your air conditioning out of the RV in the summertime. You can like step outside, enjoy your picnic table, enjoy your patio, but you can still cross inside. You can help keep the bugs out. You can help keep the dirt out. You can help keep the cold air in because as our dads always said growing up, what are you trying to do? Heat the whole neighborhood? Or cool the whole neighborhood. You get it. Dad always said stuff like that. By the way, we have a computer chip in our head. We know when you're touching the thermostat. Okay, so you might be thinking, all right, what else you got? How about the fact that toy haulers are some of the best units for sleeping a bunch of people? But not only are they good at sleeping a good number of people, they're very good at sleeping larger people, adult-sized people, because that's the thing. The average bunk is only 72 inches long, even if it's, quote, a double bunk. Those are usually just a little bit wider. Whereas with many toy haulers, especially in the fifth wheel market, but even often still in the larger travel trailer toy hauler market, you're you're getting something basically like dual queen beds back here where you've got the drop down uh, bed in the what's called happy jack lift system right here. And your sofa benches down below can convert into another sleeping space. Not to mention the number of toy haulers that also have something like a loft up here, which can sleep another big person if need be. Although, often up there, this is something you don't usually see. This is that extra little transparency info I like to give you. Um, the loft mattress that you usually get upstairs is typically just one of those 72 inch bunk mattresses. But at least it's like a long bed where you could put something else in there if you wanted a taller person. So. Again, it doesn't have to be just for hauling toys. It also doesn't have to be just for sleeping people. But again, one of the things I really want to drive home here is like if you've got big kids, you've got tall kids, for whatever reason, your tall jeans kicked in and those kids just kept stretching. An average bunkhouse doesn't usually fit kids that well. A toy hauler, though, with these big sleeping spaces can be that, uh, that, that get out of jail free car that you just can't find somewhere else. And here's another feather in the cap for the idea of a bunkhouse or even just a second bedroom, not even a bunkhouse. Like, not even saying it in a derogatory fashion. A mother-in-law suite or father-in-law suite. Or, I know that there's a lot of families who go unrepresented in the RV world who maybe have something like a child or an adult child that's with them under their care with special needs. Having a private room back here where they have things like their own space, their own facilities, their own bathroom that they can use uh, when they need to can be a hugely beneficial thing. They can be very difficult to find in the traditional world of travel trailers and fifth wheels. And here's another food for thought item just in general. So often I hear with toy haulers, well, they only have like a couch in the living room. They don't have anywhere to eat. Sure they do. It's just not in the living room. And there are sometimes like um, with my family, we have we, that still traditional American dining room, as it were, where we're not watching TV all the time. And when we FaceTime, it's face to FaceTime. And, you know, having this back here, having your own private secluded little space like this, I don't know, for me, it's kind of nice. And frankly, I don't know about you. I don't know what it is. I, I'm, I'm like... I drop crumbs. I drop crumbs all over the place. And frankly, this is a lot easier to clean, but maybe that's just my journey. <laughs> but again, thinking outside the box a little bit, like, uh, well, the opposite of Doctor Who, because everything's bigger inside the box in the Whovian world. But what I'm getting at is, what about the idea of an office? I, I can't even count on, on both hands and feet, mostly because my education didn't get me that far. Um, how many people have asked for offices in RVs, Josh? Offices in RVs. Show me something with an office in an RV. And there are very few things from the factory level truly suited for that. But think about the garage space of a toy hauler. It's potentially just a blank canvas because like these beds 
You can basically just unpin them. You could take these beds, you could take the sofa out, you could choose to maintain one or two of them. You could bring a desk in here, you could mount it into the floor nice and sturdy. Most toy haulers have an extra thick floor deck back here, because think about it. Their primary thing most people are thinking about is putting something that weighs over a thousand pounds or close to two thousand maybe, I don't know, back here. It's really nice to know you've got a very sturdy thick decking that you could screw something right down into so you can make sure that you don't have a desk jiggle banging all over the place back here. So this is, I, I think toy haulers are one of the best options for creating an office. And here's one of the main reasons why. Not only is it a nice wide open space, not only do you have a big door where if you need to roll stuff in like a big desk or whatever, monitors, I don't care, it's easy to do. But the fact that, like a lot of people say, well, why not modify a bunkhouse into an office? You, you could. When you start modifying an RV to a specific degree, you really run the risk of screwing up your resale value, something fierce. And a lot of people take serious offense to that. They say, I don't know what you're talking about. It worked just fine for me. It, it did, but it worked for you and you had your special purpose that usually isn't mass marketable, which is why we don't have a lot of RVs made for that special niche purpose. Um, Whereas, let's say you take these benches out, provided you don't just throw them away. When you go to resell, trade, flip, let go of this RV, whatever the case may be for you, even if you don't reinstall this stuff, even if you just slide it in the garage, and the next owner can see that you didn't hillbilly jury rig this thing, which I can say, because I got plenty of hillbilly blood in me. Don't give me flack for that. Um, <laughs> like this... This is a natural goatee. I grow a patchy neck beard. I got some serious redneck DNA in me. Anyway, I also grow a natural mullet, but uh, now the way that my hair is receded, it would be a skullet. I'm off topic, sorry. Even if you just slide it in here, the next person who sees this RV will say, oh, well they didn't just take a claw hammer and start whacking stuff out of this thing. Okay, I can feel confident in this, and you'll maintain your resale value more easily with a toy hauler office conversion typically as compared to, say, like a travel trailer or fifth wheel bunkhouse office conversion. Or consider this. You could turn that garage into your own private studio. So if you're needing to do something like hang up a green screen for effects, if you're looking for something like a, a mobile classroom or like, you know, your own little mobile studio and you're doing some kind of streaming or you just need a place to process things, again, like that office idea, toy haulers can get the job done. And... If you're doing it professionally, you may be able to write off some of your travel expenses as business expenses, though I am not Josh the RV tax expert, I'm Josh the RV nerd. So please, please contact your tax professional before taking advice from this guy on that topic there. Even though there's some stuff here, it's a blank canvas and it's really only limited by your imagination. So whether you take those power lift beds out, um, or if you just leave them in and up out of the way, uh, you know, think about this. You could convert this into one heck of a crafting space, or um, I, I grew up uh, doing some dog shows uh, with my mom. We had a couple different uh, animals that we had, and uh, actually last one did uh, pretty well. Never mind. Sorry. It was a Bernese Mountain dog. She was beautiful. I love her. Anyway. Um, the point here is like, this could be an amazing dog kennel. And I really say that for a lot of reasons. One of the things I'm really glad the RV industry got rid of was that like disgusting outdoor carpet that used to come in a lot of toy haulers. And now what you see is a lot of this rubberized diamond plate flooring. So things back here, like, you know, little crafting, you know, like let's say paper, you know, if you're, you're doing something with paper, it can make a little mess. It's easy just to brush it out of the RV. Um, animals, dogs, cats, whatever, they can make a bit of a mess. Sometimes they can, you know, make a, a, a literal mess um, if, if you, you're picking up what I'm plopping down. But, uh, you know, this is way easier to clean and it can kind of help keep things like maybe animal smells outside of your living area. It... Sorry, my brain just clicked. Keep smells out of the living area. I know that smoking isn't near the uh, commonplace thing it was when I was a kid, but if you have a smoker in the family and you don't want that scent to really permeate your entire RV, 
but they don't want to go outside because maybe the weather sucks. Could a garage be like a little smoker's den? I'm not, I'm not at all a proponent of smoking. I'm glad it's a habit that I never picked up. I've watched it kill several members of my family, but hey, that's, that's my life. I don't care. If you smoke, that's your life. And I'm just thinking that's potentially another way that you could use this that won't ding your resale value. What do you think about that? Is that smart? Is that stupid? I don't know. Never considered it before. What was I going to say? I don't know. Moving on. Something else that can work really well for my full-timers, though, is the fact that you can convert this into a legit laundry room. A lot of toy haulers, not all of them, but a lot of them have washer-dryer hookups back here in the garage space. Now, just thinking out loud here, whether, like, maybe you add a little laundry bench or something over here. I know that my wife really likes having a sink near the laundry space. She finds a lot of benefit in that to be able to, like, rinse out, you know, detergent caps and things like that. Or... Let's just say you bring down uh, even just the two bottom benches right there, and you can use that as a place to like set your laundry basket and have a, a, a reasonably flat space to be able to fold things and organize them before you put them away. This can be something that a traditional travel trailer or fifth wheel just cannot easily provide. So I hope some of this has been enlightening for you. Maybe it's opened up some new doors, some new ideas. Whether you're looking at getting your first RV or your next one or your last one, you know, this is a concept that can be very flexible and seems to work really well. And something I've noticed, maybe it's just because they're hard to get a hold of, but used toy haulers always seem to go pretty fast and tend to hold their value pretty well. I think, again, just because they it is so much more difficult to find one in the used marketplace. Now, these are all just random ideas that either popped into my head or I've discussed with viewers or customers or something like that over the years. Um, it's not to say that th those are the only things. Like, if you're an owner, a customer, or if you're a shopper, um, you know, what kind of ideas do you have or thoughts have you used or anything like that? Is there something I've missed? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Or if this was useful, uh, feel free to let me know that too. Let me know I'm doing a good job spending my time usefully for you. And if you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, make sure you hit that like button, help spread the message. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.